Why is he not dead? I shot him in the head several times. It's not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly so you can see what it looks like. Okay then. This is Metal Slug on the Game Boy, being played on a Super Game Boy cartridge. Um, I had no idea that this was available on the Game Boy. Oh God, what's this? No idea this was on the Game Boy. It looks like it might be like Japanese only. Uh, do we have grenades or anything? What's what's here? It's actually reminding me, oh, you, why? I shot him. I. Wow. It's making me think of Joe Blade, which is not really fair because it is probably better than Joe Blade. But there's just something about it. Um, well, it's safe to say it's not up to the Neo Geo original. <laughs> Um, would I have been happy with this back in the day? Not sure yet, we'll see. Oh, it's not really, oh god, it's not very easy to play. The screen movement is a bit wayward. The aiming and shooting is also a little bit wayward. I think Oh god. Yeah, pretty much everything about it is a bit wayward really. It's not Oh god. Collision detection's definitely not great. Yeah, I've got to say, this is not actually fun. Um, I'm amused that it's on the Game Boy. I mean, th th they could take a game, or a, oh God, or a game series uh, that originates on the Neo Geo, which was like the most immensely, humongously powerful system back in the day. Um, massively expensive, massively powerful, huge memory or storage or whatever on the cartridges and take that game and put it on the Game Boy uh, that amuses me but they really haven't pulled it off there's a fair enough version um, on the Game Boy Advance what the bloody hell just happened I've got no idea um, um, no I mean, is this actually a an original? Is it is this an official version? I mean, obviously it's not. It's on a EverDrive cartridge, but like, it's not a bootleg game, is it? Is it? Is this a homebrew? I don't know. Whatever it is, honestly, it doesn't really work. Not in my opinion. Unless you're the kind of collector who wants everything, I would not recommend buying this. Why is he not dead? I shot him in the head several times, as my pistol got such short range. Don't know. Don't know what's going on. Okay. Oh, you bastard. He's got a... I suppose it's like a helicopter equivalent with jetpack, but... Um, Ah, oh, get off. No, get, just go away. It's all so jerky and flickery and unresponsive and inaccurate. Uh, 
yeah, I'm going to stop now. I mean, I'm not dead, but I, I don't want to play. Uh, this is not fun at all. Not enjoying it. It's a shame because it's a brilliant series. I mean, th th it just it feels like a homebrew. I don't know if it is or not, um, but they haven't pulled it off at all, in my opinion. Okay, going to stop there before I just get repetitive and boring. I'm probably already boring. Sorry about that. Thank you for watching. Hello. Today's question for Q&A is from Polybius81 or Polybius081, if you prefer. Link to their channel down there. Um, hi Steve. What are your favourite retro video game soundtracks of all time? Perhaps you could change your glasses because you can't read that properly. Uh, perhaps you could share with us any fond memories you have of certain games and the music associated with them. Also, is there a particular system you consider your favourite in terms of its audio capabilities? I'm struggling to read with these as well. <sighs> need new eyes. Uh, a personal favourite of mine is the, Mega, is the Mega Drive, as I'm a massive fan of electronic music and the Mega Drive's Yamaha YM2612 sound processor is fantastic at handling electronic music in the hands of talented music producers. Cheers mate. Okay, um... Most, I've actually answered this question once before, or something like it, but I'm going to answer it again because there's more uh, more to the question than previous questions. Um, mostly when I'm playing games, I don't pay an awful lot of attention to the music. I can only think of three games where, maybe four, I can actually recall the music at all, or recall thinking, hey, this is good. Um... I find the music on Skyrim cool. I've got it turned off now, actually, because when I recorded a video of it, I turned it off because copyright. I actually got a a, an I, a content ID flag thing on a on a Skyrim video a few years ago um, because of the music. So I I disabled the music ever since then. Um, and another one that comes to mind, and I. I haven't played it in ages, but I remember thinking the music was brilliant, was, uh, here we go, I'm going to blank on the name now. What's that Xbox game? What was the reason for buying the Xbox? <sighs> Memory. Halo, obviously. T just, yeah, uh, great music on that game. I've only played the first one and really liked it. I didn't actually finish it. I got sidetracked and didn't go back to it and I should do because it's a really good game it's I find I often don't go back to games on like PS2 and original Xbox era games because they're they're I don't tend to play the really in-depth big games on older hardware it's like I'll go back and play retro like pro proper retro retro games. I'll go back and play PS1 and earlier and for the pick up and play aspect of it. But when there's a big game with a big story and it's a lot of gameplay, like mm, dozens of hours, I tend not to invest that much time on retro games. Um, but I think Halo is one that I should do. So is... Um, San Andreas, come to think of it, because that's one I never finished, and I really should have a go. Um, yeah, but the music on Halo, fantastic, as I remember it. Um, <clears throat> it's been a while. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog, love the music on that, especially Green Hill Zone. I mean, that just, it sticks in my head. But sticking in the head, Earworm, this is the one I've mentioned previously. Um, James Pond 2, Robocod, that, I played it back in the day on my Mega Drive, loved the music, and then uh, when I came to upgrade to like PS1, I sold my Mega Drive and all of the games with it, um, but I still had the music in my head, and years and years and years later, I still had the music in my head, but by that time, couldn't actually remember what the music was from. 
it would just go around, you know, it, it would appear in my head and be going round and round and round. You know, like when you're laying in bed at night and you can't sleep and there's a piece of music just starts going round. And it would be that. And I had no idea what it was. And then I started collecting retro stuff, like, seriously, as opposed to just picking up the odd bit here and there. And I got a Mega Drive, and I got James Pond too because I remembered really enjoying the game. And, oh my God, it was just like... the realisation that that was what the pizza music was that was going around in my head. It was just, just a blinding flash of something or other in my brain. I mean, I was just... <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It was just like, OMG, with many exclamation marks. I was pleased. Yeah, that piece of music, it does something to my brain that I kind of like. Uh, nostalgia, I suppose, because I mean... Uh, I don't know, it's just really catchy. Um, system where I really like the audio capabilities. Commodore Amiga. Uh, partly because of the actual hard... the, the, the audio capabilities of it. I mean, by modern standards, it's not great because it was 8-bit audio. But the sampling abilities of it were good. Uh, and easy is the thing. It was really easy to sample stuff. I had a sampling cartridge. Um, and Octomed, that, that was just like... You could get samples from I don't know where. You could, you could rip samples yourself. You could get them off... I got them off of CDs, I think, at that time. I wasn't initially on the internet. Um... But Octomed, Octomed Sound Studio I was using in the end, because I'd got a 060 processor in my Amiga, I could use the CPU mixing capabilities and have six channels of 14-bit sound. And I did some pretty decent, well, I say decent, I think it was decent, interesting music. Um made a CD. Managed to sell about a dozen copies <laughs> a long time ago. There are tracks from that, in fact all of the tracks I think, on my channel but they're set to private so you can't hear them, sorry. Uh, copyright trolled, well one twat was putting in bogus copyright claims and I couldn't be bothered to deal with it so I just set it all private and I'm not inclined to set it unprivate anytime soon because YouTube's uh, th their system for for claiming for dealing with that kind of bullshit is just too it is is nonsense. Basically, if someone claims that your music belongs to them, YouTube will put uh, penalize you, and then you've got to you got to like counterclaim and give them your name and address and then they can dispute that and then you've got to take them to court which obviously I can't afford to do so it's like the other person if you're not loaded they can win um, it's dumb so I, I can't be bothered with all of that so I don't put my music on anymore although it is on some of it is on SoundCloud I don't think those tracks are on SoundCloud not sure. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah, so Commodore Amiga, purely because Octomed um, and sampling. Really, really cool. Yeah, I think that covers it really. Um, okay, anyone else who's got any questions they'd like answering in a video like this, leave your question in the comments below and begin your question with 4Q&A, so I know not just to answer it in the comments and thank you for watching hello that Benway chap's got to left me to do his outro for him lazy sod anyway he puts out videos of like gameplay nonsense and stuff on a fairly regular basis so if you don't want to miss any hit the subscribe button and if you've already done that well thank you oh yes um, while I think of it, if you're waiting for a new video from him, why not check out his playlist? He's got around 1,500 videos, 
already recorded and separated into categories according to system whatever that means um yes are we done yet jolly good man's a blithering idiot if you ask me but there you go right where's the whiskey